not only is it like the four years that I've been doing it, but I've given up, I think, most of this year to be on the road away from my wife, away from friends, and, and then you think, man, what if I don't nail this thing, then, like, that's just, I'm bad at my job. You know, like I, if I don't nail this thing 100%, I'm just actually not good at the thing that I've chosen to do. Yeah, so then that, then you spend like a fear starts to settle in like, oh God, I really gotta take this telling jokes thing very seriously. The scary thing is I never actually even felt ready to do this thing. Like even when I agreed to do the special, I didn't feel ready. Um, and my agent gave me like a push that was just basically like, just set it, set it and then you'll do it. I mean, it, it, it actually has been like an interesting year. There's been lots of ups and downs, like as far as the preparation of this thing, because I broke my arm like halfway through and then had to change, postpone the special for a month and a half, which at some point felt like a blessing. Like, no, actually not at some point, immediately. <laughs> immediately when I thought like, Maybe my arm, when I fell on the ground while I was carrying a pizza in Tampa, Florida on midnight after doing two Friday night shows and tripped on a trolley track, I laid on the ground and said, I think I just broke my arm. And the opener that I was with, who was watching the whole thing happen, said, no, you're fine, man. And in my head, I was like, I hope I'm not so I can postpone my special. <laughs> okay, I hope that I really did break it. Yeah, and then waking up at 6 a.m., which just was the worst thing ever, just broken arm, sucked, went to the hospital. But there was this huge relief, like, I remember you texting my agent, <laughs> like, uh, turns out I broke my arm, so we gotta figure that out. And then they came back a day later, and they're like, we got you a new date, it's in a month and a half. I'm like, no, wait, <laughs> this was supposed to be like, maybe another year now for me to recover from this. It wasn't supposed to be a month and a half. So at last ditch ever, so I just screamed out. Maybe, yeah, maybe we like do like a, are there any firefighters in here? Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Like small little, yeah, even like super small. Like, yes, there's 25 of us. We're on the second story, second door to the left. Cause it's still smoke, I can't see. So do you feel ready for tomorrow? Um, yesterday I totally did. And then today it actually started to hit me in the most real way. I'm just like, wow, it's, there's like people that flew into town that work for a company and they're like producing this thing and I can't just like say like, ah, I'm not into it. <laughs> you know, like I really have to go for it. There's like people that are working on it and, then that, and that's even scarier. Yeah, so my dad, my dad is uh, making the trek out to Brooklyn um, for the special, which is amazing. I mean, he's, you know, definitely been so supportive of me ever since I've started um, to want to do anything artistic or, you know, within comedy. But you know, he's a hard worker, and he um, he had like this crazy, really, really cool life growing up, where he a buddy of his got a job on this yacht that was going to be like a rich, a rich guy's yacht that had like a captain. And, he had travel around the world, and my dad, um, the, the, that was like leaving the next day, and this guy was like, "Hey, there's one job left. Like, it's like chef slash deckhand." And my dad was like, "Great." So he never cooked anything. He read a book that night, a like cookbook, and then went in the next morning and just took off with a boat. And the guy hired him and did it for like five years, and which also was an, uh, this kind of this realization that I had recently because I remember when I thought that I wanted to do something different than the normal of like going to college and having a job. Part of that motivation was like thinking that my dad had given up in some ways. Like he had this really cool life and he traveled and had all these fun experiences and then he just like gave up and started working in like finance department, this company like traveling around as a traveling salesman around the, around the salesman around the, you know, the Northwest. 
And then a year ago, I was talking to a, someone about a friend, and he, like, saying how I always thought my dad had given up. And he's like, what are you talking about? He had you and then sacrificed his life for you because he loved you so much and wanted to give up all that stuff, like, wanted to support a family, wanted to do this. And it was like, oh, my gosh, my dad did something, like, more than... I'm probably even capable of doing. It wasn't giving up, it was doing what you have to do. And so that just created, like, even my dad becoming almost more of a hero in my head. I mean, he really is, like, my hero in so many ways. There's this great story of my grandfather. Dad, we tell it. So we were at Yale Reservoir on a picnic water skiing trip. And my dad and my brother-in-law were backing the boat in the water. So sure enough, the boat wouldn't start, which happens a lot in our family. And my dad had the engine cover up. My sister was looking and she said, Mother, what is that? What is that on dad's leg? And he was wearing nothing but a pair of swim trunks with that little nylon casing on the inside. And he had one leg inside the engine compartment and one leg outside. And he was, with all his might, trying to get that belt on and something would come loose. And it was hanging all the way down to his kneecap. And my mother looked at that. And I don't want to scare Gary out of the cab right now. <laughs> Ivan! Ivan! Put yourself together! And my dad looks up like that and she's pointing down. Anyway, it was a classic. But what was it? It was a uh, it was a set of gonads that had gone south, <laughs> far south. <laughs> and uh, so today, when I walked in, it actually was the first time I had seen the venue. Um, besides, I watched this someone else from something there, but yeah, it was perfect. It was a perfect size. The stage felt great. Like, and it's, it was nice to go a day early. I'm not intimidated. I met the staff there. I got to see all the crew, and it definitely put me at ease a little bit more. Um, but yeah, there's it's definitely feelings of <clears throat> fear and um, excitement, though. The decision to make the special comes from pressure of wanting to be constantly making things, and also the pressure from the people who work with you, which is not bad pressure. You need people to pressure you, you know, time and time to take a step out of who you are and like really try and, all right, yeah, let's take this seriously. It's my job. I should be like focused on this all the time. This is what I do. I do stand up that, you know, people that do their jobs, they spend like 40 hours a week, like a week at least doing that job most of the time. And uh, I could at least give myself that. But it comes from the people that work with you, managers or agents or whatever. They want you to produce content, um, you know, and again, it doesn't affect them. If you don't produce content, they just move on to another person and they build someone else's career but you can't just be like yeah yeah and then not make something you just gotta be focused on it so I took uh, the angle of pretending like I was ready <laughs> like, which is um, kind of how everything has worked out for me anyways Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Food. <laughs> That's your dad? You can't hear. <laughs> so how do you mm -hmm. feel on the last one? Good. Good. It felt a lot better than the first one. The first one was. You want, oh, the first hey, one it was, was good. Great. It just was like the tight. crowd here yeah. was great. <laughs> no, it just felt so good. To like halfway through the second set, I was like, okay, we're getting it. We're good. Just to relax a little. It was all there. It's such a weird thing to do, though. It's like a year of work, or more, more than a year of work, but like a year of knowing I was going to do this. But then just one night, just two shows, better get it. <laughs> yeah, it's nerve wracking. Got a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. It's like the I know the secret sauce, though. What? Well, I can't say in front of all these people. No, no you can. can. Well, the secret sauce is the jokes are the same. 
It's the intensity and the passion and the delivery. It was great. Thank you. I loved it.